How do you automatically switch to the strongest Wi-Fi? Something isn't working on my computer. How do I get it automatically fixed? So let's get you some answers. When I move around the house with my laptop, it doesn't connect me to my other Wi-Fi, which is actually faster. How do I get it to do that? Great question. And it's actually pretty common. And the solution is good for both laptops and desktops. You see, your computer wants to give you the best uninterrupted connection. So it will hold on to whatever Wi-Fi that it has. So even if there's a faster Wi-Fi with five bars, it will still hold on to the first one, even though it only has two bars of signals. Here is how you fix that. In your Windows, go down to the search and then type there network. You want to click on the button that says view network connections. And here you're going to see all the various ways that you can connect. You want to right click on your wireless connectivity and then choose properties. At the top, you'll see a button there called configure. Click on that. And when that pops up, click on advanced right at the top. And on the left hand side, you have a whole bunch of options. Scroll down until you see roaming aggressiveness. And here is where you can change the value. It goes all the way from the lowest to the highest. The default is medium. I choose the highest. So I wanted to find the best Wi-Fi spot that it could possibly do when I'm roaming around with my computer. Now, just one thing to note, especially if you have a desktop computer or are usually not wandering around with your laptop. The aggressiveness is how often Wi-Fi will keep looking for a better network. So if you're basically sitting in one location or rely on one Wi-Fi network, then you actually get a more stable connection by selecting low option. You're basically telling your computer not to bother looking for a better connection and just keep the one that you're connected to. Also, if you set it to high and you find that you keep getting disconnected from the Wi-Fi, well, that can also be irritating. So just switch it back to medium, which is basically the default. Next up, how do I get onto my router settings so I can log in and make changes? Whenever I make a video on how to get faster internet, this question tends to pop up. And I totally get it because there's no default way to get to your own router settings. If you have a Netgear, you may need to use routerlogin.net. If you have a TP-Link router, you may need to use tplinkwifi.net. Or some routers have an IP address like 192.168.1.1. So how do you know which one is yours? Well, it's pretty simple. Let me show you. In your Windows, go down to the search and then type there CMD and then click on the command prompt. When that pops up, what we want to type in there is IP config and then press enter. And here you're going to see two very important key information. The first one is this is your IP address of your computer that you're currently on. And the next one is called the gateway. That is typically the IP address that you will need for your router. And that's how you get in. So now that you have your IP address of your default gateway, take that IP address, paste it into your browser, and you're going to land up on your router's login screen. Okay, next up. I can't get to a website. Some websites works, but others don't. Is it my computer that's the problem? Or is it my internet service provider? Or is it the website that's broken? Fair question. Let me show you how to check whose fault it is. So open up a web browser and you're going to type in a random website address. Here's thetechyguy.com, which is my blog, and you can see that it's working. Let's simulate a website that doesn't work. So I'm going to give it some random URL and clearly it says the site cannot be reached. How do you know if it's you or if the website is down? Well, what you want to do, you want to Google, is it down right now? And then a website pops up that looks like this. Type in the website that you were trying to get to. That is the first step. And then click on check. What this will do is that it will tell you if the website itself is up, whether the system can actually get to that website. If it's up, well, you got to look closely to see, is it you or is it your service provider? So back to the Windows search we go. We're going to type there CMD and we're going to click on Command Prompt. Now remember before we did the IP address lookup? Well, now we see that the gateway is that IP. Yours could be different. And I'm going to type there ping space the IP address. In my case, 192.168.65.2. And you get a reply that looks like this. That means that from this computer, I can actually get information back from my router. 
Let me show you what happens if my router was down and I couldn't get any information. So here's some random IP address and you can see it says destination host is unreachable. If you see that, well, that's a problem on your computer, not necessarily that the website's down. So if your computer isn't reaching the router, then you need to troubleshoot your own computer. And actually, that's our next question. I keep trying to update my computer, but it's stuck or never updates. It tries to get the latest update, but it has trouble working out what you have or what you don't have before it can tell you what's missing. Or see, sometimes it tries to update and then you get an error saying something is wrong on that lovely blue screen of death. Panic. Well, no need to. Just do this. And back to the search we go, and this time we're gonna type there update. And we're gonna click on a check for update. So let's just say your computer is constantly stuck on the check for update, and it looks something like this. It's constantly checking, but it's never actually doing the updates. All right, what you need to do, on the left-hand side, you click on something called troubleshoot. When that pops up, you'll see that at the bottom it says additional troubleshooters. And now you have a whole bunch of options that you can play with. If you were stuck on that internet, couldn't reach your router issue, well, you can troubleshoot it this way. Now, we don't want to troubleshoot why we can't get the Windows update. You simply click on that and then click on Run the Troubleshooter. Now, while this troubleshooter is pretty good, it certainly doesn't go deep enough into solving your Windows issue. This is why on every computer that I have, I run the Iolo System Mechanic, who are actually today's sponsor. There's just so much that's built into the system mechanic, it's ridiculous. So I like to go into something called the deep clean. When you go into that, it will fix a whole bunch of issues. And when I said I install this on all my computers, I mean literally on all their computers, including my kids' computers, because they now know don't call me for tech support until you've opened up System Mechanic and have run through these processes. So now System Mechanic is basically doing me out of my tech support job and I'm all for that because it fixes just so many issues. Now I'm technical enough to go to the registry and clean it up. I'm technical enough to know which files to save and which files can safely be deleted but I still use System Mechanic because at a touch of a button, it just does it for me. And look at that insane toolbox. Look how many utilities that are actually useful are included within the system itself. For me, System Mechanic is a must have. Uh, system Mechanic runs on both Windows 10 and Windows 11, and basically you have this little mechanic constantly tweaking and updating your computer, so your computer is always tuned up, and that's pretty awesome. Just click the links in the description and automatically gives you 60% off system mechanic. Okay, next question. If I'm browsing the web on my phone, how can I continue to read the same page on my computer without emailing it to myself or adding it as a bookmark? Ooh, I like this one. I do this all the time. Not only can you do it from your phone to your computer, but you can actually do it the other way too. And the cool thing is you don't even have to be on the same Wi-Fi network so it can work from anywhere in the world. Oh, this is the website I want to continue reading on my computer. I click on the three little dots at the top right and I click on share. Then I go down to the bottom where it says send to your devices. And here I have two devices that I'm currently logged in with my same Gmail account and I choose one. Once I've chosen it on my desktop, on my browser, I will see this message that pops up. It's a, hey, this page was shared from your phone. And once I click on open in the new tab, voila, I can continue reading that particular web page. And it works the other way too. So let's just say this is a news article I'm reading on my computer. I can click on the share button. I can click on send to your devices. And this time it's gonna pop up the Google phone as well as my other laptop that I'm logged in with the same Gmail account. I click that button. And then if I go to my phone, I'll see a little notification that pops up at the top and I can continue reading that exact article on my phone. And the best bit is you don't have to be logged into the same Wi-Fi for this to work. You can see my Wi-Fi is off and I'm just using my mobile data. So this works because you're logged into your Google account on both devices and you have the sync switched on. So as long as you have internet access, this is just gonna work. All right, next question. I forgot my own Wi-Fi's password and I don't wanna reset it on every device. How can I see it? Fairly common because most of us don't change our home Wi-Fi's password regularly. So when we get a new computer or a new phone, you kind of tend to forget what the Wi-Fi password is, but don't worry, here's a very simple way to see what it is. 
And back to the window search and we're gonna type there network and we're gonna click on view network connections. When that pops up, we're gonna look for our Wi-Fi connection again. We're going to right click on it and we're gonna choose status. And this time at the top, it's going to give you an option called wireless properties. And at the top of that page, it's called security tab. Click on that. And you see it says show characters, simply put a tick in there and it would reveal the Wi-Fi password. If you have any other Windows questions, put them in the comments and we can do another one of these if this was useful to you. In the meantime, if you're still shutting down Windows and you think it's actually shutting down, check out this video right over here or check out this video right over here that YouTube thinks you should like. Hit the head down here and help me get to that million subscriber mark. That will be awesome if you can help me out there. Give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you in this video or this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.